yeah, it's that subject again. A potential pending Premier League table at the end of the season and a promoted Leicester beginning in the top flight on minus points. Yeah, that actually could happen. Has English football become a bit of a laughing stock now? Leicester City said to be this morning considering legal action after being charged by the Premier League and referred to an independent commission for breaching, yes, profit and sustainability rules and failing to submit audited finances. If found guilty, they could face a points deduction from next season. So just as with Everton fans nervous about all of this and Forest fans nervous about all of this, Leicester City fans, no doubt, nervous about all of this this morning. Eight years after winning the Premier League title, how has it come to this? I'm going to get Simon's take in a moment, but a short time ago we spoke to our friend FFP expert Stefan Borson and said to him straight, what is the worst case scenario for Leicester? They seem to be going very hard on the sort of legal defence. Uh, the worst case scenario when you resist in the way that they seem to be resisting is that you effectively sacrifice the mitigation that Nottingham Forest received. So you immediately effectively say, we're kissing goodbye to two or three points of mitigation. What that means, of course, is that it puts you straight in towards the top end of the range that is now being established in the cases that we've seen. So we're sort of seeing a range of three to eight points for a significant breach uh, of, of PSR. Uh, and I can tell you, looking at the likely numbers, this is going to be in the range of probably a £40 million breach at the level uh, above Everton. So you would think that they're resisting very hard because they know that this is not a situation where they could effectively have a minor breach and then get a discount for cooperation, which would would effectively make it a, a zero point deduction or a one point deduction. They obviously fear a very big deduction and are taking a view that uh, a, a two to three point mitigation for cooperation is only going to get them part of the way down the road. Stefan, is this purely a timetable issue? Why have Everton and Forrest been charged and punished in the same season? But with Leicester, talk of punishment will not be until next season. Well, it's the rules. So Leicester City are captured by the old rules and the old rules uh, don't have the expedited timetable that the, the rules that came in uh, after they were relegated. They have only just effectively fessed up their numbers for 22-23. Uh, they resisted uh, showing the numbers to the Premier League, uh, presumably because they say, well, they're not a Premier League club and therefore they don't need to. And it will be a sort of slower um, probably a, a, a more tortuous legal battle uh, that will resolve itself probably sometime in the middle of next season. Have Leicester nonetheless got themselves an argument when they claim the Premier League has no jurisdiction over them as they are not a, a, a Premier League club? They are in the EFL. Well, they obviously think they've got an argument. I mean, it, it's very difficult to decipher from uh, putting together the, the EFL rules and the Premier League rules. Uh, there have been clubs, including Leicester, who have been charged for seasons where they were in the EFL when they were in the Premier League. And uh, historically, Leicester were a club that settled with the EFL in respect of PSR breaches for periods when they were in the other division. So it's not without precedent, but but it is complicated as to who governs the PSR regime for a season uh, that's gone where you get relegated and in this complexity where they're about to get promoted again. So all bets are off. And, and clearly Leicester's KC, who I think is Nick DeMarco, who we know acted for Nottingham Forest, clearly believes that they have some good arguments to run uh, such that they can uh, risk throwing in the bin any possibility of mitigation for cooperation and early admission. I was Stefan Borson a short time ago. Simon, like Stefan, you are all over this. Of course you are. But we've got an added ingredient to this because here we have an EFL club yeah. um, who are being pulled up by the Premier League. There's a different element to this debate well, all round, isn't but there? But they weren't an EFL club at the time. And it's an interesting one. Whether you agree with the principle of financial fair play, and I agree with it to some extent, but I think it's a blunt instrument that is unsophisticated and causing more problems. And the reasons why people are getting so angry about it now is once upon a time, they were quite comfortable getting financial fines. Ah, oh, we'll take £20 million if that's what we've got to do. Now they're getting sporting sanctions and points. The temperature's you know, risen, and people like Nick DeMarco are sitting there with their cash registers taking in huge amounts of money because they're representing clubs. Leicester ran an argument 
the, the rules suggest that what happens is if you're in the Premier League in March um, or, or in a league at a particular time, then you're governed by their rules. But there was a slippage in when, Relig when Leicester got relegated. As a result of getting relegated, the EFL requires you to provide your financial forecasts for the ensuing year by November. Yeah. And Leicester didn't want to. And the reasons why Leicester, I would imagine, didn't want to is because the moment they submitted their financial forecasts for the ensuing year, the EFL were going to say, you're going to be in breach. And so we need you to do something about that. And that would have meant Leicester would have had to be selling players in January and they didn't want to. And Nick DiMarco successfully managed to achieve that argument by saying, well, you weren't in the jurisdiction, so you're not in the jurisdiction. So now the other argument is, and so the Premier League waited for the EFL case, waited for that outcome. The EFL were unsuccessful and Nick DiMarco was successful on behalf of Leicester. And then the Premier League stepped up and said, well, h hang on, you were, you were in the Premier League in that season you are obliged to meet, meet the financial fair play obligations that you signed up for as clubs, whether you like them or not. Right? And it would be very interesting to see all these clubs that are crying. Now. Yeah, yeah. Did they vote for the rules that were put in place? Because if they didn't, and their voting record consistently says they voted for these regulations, then they're bloody fools to themselves. Yeah. So now you've got a situation where Leicester have undoubtedly breached financial fair play. Undoubtedly. Were, undoubtedly. They will have breached financial fair play. That's why they're being charged. And now it's about jurisdiction. And so the Premier League are saying you were a member club of ours in March of last year. And so as a result of that, that season qualifies you to be judged by the three-year cycle and you are looking like you're breaching financial fair play, so you face that charge. Stefan thinks it's a, a more than a £40 million pound breach, more than Everton. Oh, I think it's a significant breach. I think it's a really, really significant but, breach. Sandra, thing, I mean, the, to me, as always, the important people in all of this are the fans who are stuck in this. They're looking at it from distance, as we are, although you're right across it, and all credit to you. But Stefan Borson, who's across it, says this could be a long, tortuous legal argument. Leicester fans want no, now, well, what did we face? Well, tough, because that's the reality of the world that we're now in. The point is, is that the reasons why it would be a long and torturous argument is because you're going to wheel lawyers in to argue about technicalities. They're going to argue about jurisdiction. They are going to say <coughs> that the Premier League have no right to be doing this. The Premier League are not singling Leicester out. The rules are the rules are yeah. the rules. Yeah. And Leicester have had, their, have had their way and said to the EFL, no, we're not coming down to abide by your rules because actually in March of this year, we weren't under your rules, so we don't have to provide you with our financial statements for the ensuing year in November. So we're not going to give them to you. And the reasons why I would assume they didn't want to give them to them is that the EFL would say, but you're going to breach. So in order to fix that breach, we're going to suggest to you that you might be having to sell players. Leicester didn't want that because Leicester's sole focus in life is to get back to the Premier League. And they certainly don't want the EFL meddling with that opportunity. Mm. Then they go back to the Premier League. So now you're under the Premier League's jurisdiction. And you clearly breached it in the Premier League terms, so you suffered a consequence. Now, the other argument is, is financial fair play strangling the Premier League? Is the Premier League bringing itself into disrepair and disrepute? There's an argument it could be. Do you but, think it is? Well, I don't think it's a great look. I don't think it's a look of, 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 of a, a league that's being so illuminating and so investable and so uh, trailblazing in its financial landscape and its product quality and everything about it but again, I suggest that there's been plenty of time for clubs like Leicester and Palace and West Ham and all the other clubs that don't feature, that don't feature in the top six yeah. to have lobbied the changes and say, no, 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 no. We, we, we don't want these rules. Yeah. Jim, can I just Go give on, you sure. a manager's point of view? When I was at Manchester City and I was doing my pro licence business, um, business courses and whatever, I sat with the chief exec at, uh, at Manchester City. You went through the books of Manchester City as a football club and an entity at the time. And he outlined to me exactly what a financial mess the football club were in. And I sat there as a manager and it opened my eyes, to be honest with you, about where the club is and sustainability of the club. And you sit back as a manager and you think to yourself, you know what, this isn't about me putting pressure on them as owners and whatever to supply me with more money. This is sustainability for a football club to be there in hundreds of years' time. Now, if these rules are put in place for that reason and that reason alone to make sure that there is a football club. But there's a better way to do it, Stuart. Yeah. If you want sustainability, then ask these owners to put up significant bonds because that deals with the sustainability argument. 
whilst I like the idea of levelling up and not allowing people to filter down the problems of the Premier League onto the Championship League 1 and League 2, if you're worried about the sustainability side of things, say to a Middle Eastern consortium or American consortium, yeah. you want to spend money like, you, like a drunken sailor? OK, you, spend, you put a billion pounds up as equity or as a bond, and there's your sustainability argument. Yeah. You've got to get a balance right between investability yeah, and the I wonderful league. I would take that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes the football club still sustainable. I though. hear what you're saying, Stuart. I have to say to you, I'm looking at the messages coming in. Next to no sympathy from fans of other clubs for Leicester. Ricky, a Coventry fan, same old Leicester, always cheating. We remember when they cheated in the early 2000s, managed to avoid a points deduction. Uh, I hope they crash and burn. I mean, come on, Ricky, that's but a it's bit very harsh. Look at the predicament they're in. Interesting language from the lawyers yeah very robust and well, as Stefan Borson suggests there is no indication of cozying up to the Premier League and putting get, making sure that the mitigation side comes into play sure they're going to fight this which means that when they get when they get sanctioned which they will mm. it'll be the biggest sanction that the Premier League can give them so Leicester City fans I mean the prospect of you being promoted and Leicester beginning in the top flight on minus points I mean, what honestly is your feeling about that this morning? Simon, the thing is, has English football become a bit of a laughing stock in all of this? I mean, wh where eventually is it going to go? I, there's a, a message there. Let me find it. Matt, who's a Leeds United fan. This FFP situation is now a joke. Forrest Everton, now Leicester, all finished narrowly above Leeds when relegated, yeah. but now all shown to have cheated. Well, we don't know that for, uh, as yet, though. Cheated is strong, but uh, allegations of. While we, while we sold Rafinha and Phillips to meet FFP. And, and Wolverhampton Wanderers did their bit. I mean, look, it depends what you characterise. Is it a, is it the great look? No, it's not. But I don't think we can suggest that it's, we're a laughing stock amongst other leagues because you can look at the chaos in Italy and the corruption and big clubs like Juventus being booting down leagues and all the challenges that, that La Liga has had with the, with the issues around Barcelona and so on and so forth and the ridiculousness of Real Madrid selling £100 million worth of wasteland to be able to comply with UEFA rules because they got around it that way. Look... I, it, these are acts of self-harm and financial fair play as an instrument uh, was brought in for, for various reasons and some would make the argument it was brought in to protect the cartel and in part that's right and another part of it was to be able to try to protect the, the, the underlying effect of unprecedented expenditure at the top of the pyramid which affects the bottom right we are getting to a territory now where we're going to have barristers with wigs sitting next to the managers on the bench during games <laughs> because it's getting that ridiculous yeah but the point is is i do believe now that there's a thought process that needs to be looked at carefully the clubs are screaming now they're screaming and i make this point they weren't screaming when it was financial they would get on with that they wouldn't like it but they'd get on with it now it's points they're screaming and i do think that that tells you that Something has an effect, so the effect of financial fair play is impacting upon the the, 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 the the structure of the Premier League and hurting it in a certain way. So there needs to be some probably rethinking around the governance of the sport. Now, whether that's the changing of the voting criteria in the Premier League, because if you've got a 14 to 6 voting criteria, you need 14 votes right. to have anything changed. You know you've got six in a bag. You know that six are going to be the top six that are going to vote for everything that suits them. And it don't, doesn't take much to get one of the other clubs to come along with them. And all of a sudden, you've got, out, you've got an outmaneuvered situation. So maybe you change the constitution to an 11 to 9 majority that requires agendas to be changed. So what are but, you suggesting now? I, I'm just think, I'm thinking on the spot at the same time as looking at the problem, uh, looking at the solution rather than the problem. If we think financial fair play is now beginning to diminish this wonderful league, this investable league, this league that's attracted all this great wealth and great players because of its attraction, and we're now starting starting to regulate it and control it and turn the Premier League into almost the HMRC and policing it in that way. And we don't want that. We want to get a balance between what it was trying to achieve and what it's looking like it's beginning to, 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 to have an effect on. And that balance has to be struck. And that means that perhaps new rules have to be introduced, whether that means a moratorium. And I know what that people will say, well, what about what happened to us? Well, the mm. past is the past. You know, what happened to somebody five years is not relevant what, to rule what, changes what, now. Meaning what? Are you saying suspend the rules? Well, possibly. I'm, I'm throwing everything up in the air for discussion and suggesting that maybe this has got to be thought through. I, I spoke last week... Um, about the blunt instrument that affected Nottingham Forest. And the reasons why, despite the fact that Nottingham Forest contributed to their own downfall, spent like drunken sailors, and ultimately didn't manage their affairs and knew what their affairs were going to be, there's an unfairness about a club coming up from the Championship car carrying a lower level of allowable loss into a Premier League and trying to sustain itself and finding it's carrying 12 million losses that are allowed sure. rather than the 35 sure. that you're allowed in the Premier League sure. each season. Yeah. So I think these are unsophisticated. We've got to get the balance right between what we want our Premier League to be, mm. what the effect of the Premier League is on everybody else, 
and what we're actually what are we trying to achieve here are we trying to unwind with financial governance and independent regulation arguably the greatest domestic league that football has ever seen is that yeah. what our end game is well we need to be careful they're reining in the overspenders the fans are bewildered and the lawyers are getting richer leicester fans what do you think nick is a big leicester fan stuart has been waiting for a while nick good morning your club's in a bit morning, of trouble Nick. yeah Morning, morning, morning. Morning. What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I just think it's the smaller clubs that are getting penalised. Um, I don't understand how you've got your Man Cities, uh, your Chelsea. In Chelsea, they spent you know half a billion on a, on a transfer window, and I don't understand how. And, and obviously, they've got the wages that go with it. And but they haven't that, breached Dan. Dan, they, Nick, they, Nick, they, they haven't sorry, breached Nick, Nick. Nick, they haven't breached yet. Their financial accounts for 22-23, which were given to the Premier League in December, they didn't breach. Now, next December, they'll get theirs. If they don't sell £200 million pounds of players that have no carrying value, they'll get theirs. And Manchester City is a completely different I, I, argument. I, I That's a completely no, different I argument. I appreciate Man City. That's an ongoing thing and everything like that. You know, What I, I don't understand about Leicester is um, basically we, we, we've been uh, looked at for the championship. We've only just gone down to the championship. Championship. How can we have breached anything yet? You no, know, I mean, you're, you're, you're missing the point. Like, you're missing the point, Nick. You, you you avoided being judged by the Premier League because you were supposed to produce your accounts for the Premier League in December, and you'd have been sanctioned because you were in the Premier League when you breached the rules for the 22-23 season. The financial year ended in twenty in June 23. You were in the Premier League during a period of that season, so you're under their rules. But you got around it by not giving your accounts in December like everybody else because you are now in the EFL. And then the EFL said, "Well, we want." your financial accounts for the next year and you told the EFL to go away because you weren't in the EFL when the rule changes suggested that you had to give them your accounts for the next year in November which meant that you had no accountability for what you were going to do in the EFL because yeah. the EFL would have said to you ah you're going to breach this year because we've seen your business plans we need you to flog a load of players and Leicester didn't want to do it Nick can I ask you is it hard support in your club when you don't really know the destiny of your club I, I'll support Leicester all the time. I don't, you know, I mean, <laughs> crikey, I'm, I'm, I'm Leicester born and bred. I've, I've supported them since I was a kid. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm nearly 60 now. Like, so I'll, I'll support them whatever. You know, so I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just so, so annoying when you're trying to get back to the Premiership. You're trying to do this, trying to do that. I mean, I know, I and this is hanging over you. Yeah, yeah. Listen, well, Nick, thank yeah. you so much, Nick. We're moving on. Dan's been waiting patiently. Dan, good morning. Another Leicester fan. Good morning. You okay? Good, thank you, mate. So where's your head with this? I just don't think financial fair play is really up to purpose, really. Because if you look between 2020 and 2023, Leicester had a net spend of around £35 million. In that time, we were in Europe twice. We were FA Cup winners. Now, obviously, I know it's not just taking transfers into account. And behind the scenes, something has clearly gone wrong. Um, but in that time, we sold our best players for huge profits. I heard that Leeds fan talking about selling Rafinha. Well, we sold for Farner for 80 million. We sold Chilwell for 50 million. So I don't really get where he's coming from. Mm. Um, all mm. financial fair play is doing, really, is protecting the interests of the big clubs and pun punishing anyone that gets close to challenging. Right. Well, Dan, Simon was saying a moment ago, how about suspending the... You're serious about this? I'm saying that they need to be looked at. And they need to be looked at primarily because they've not been enforced properly in the past. Yeah. And now that they're being enforced properly, everyone's crying. And I'm looking at this fact that what's it going to do to the Premier League? Forget Leicester, forget Nottingham Forest, forget Everton as, inc as, as isolated instances. Look at what it's doing to the Premier League. And is it advancing the Premier League? These clubs knew the rules. But the rules now, when you, the, more, the more you look at them, the more sophisticated you need to look at them. You need to look at the net asset value of a football club, not just over a three-year cycle. You need to look at its balance sheet and say, is it in positive or is it in negative? Not in three-year yeah. cycles, but ad infinitum. But do you not and agree with me, Simon? At the end of the season, when we look at the standings, the Premier League standings, the Premier League itself is going to look stupid if these aren't the true standings. Well, the, the Premier League is trying to get to a situation with the rules that it's introduced under the auspice of the clubs themselves that have sat there being complicit in these rules, saying that we're trying to fast-track everything. We're trying not to allow people to carry things over. We're trying not to let go into one season rather than another. So there's always going to be this imperfect circle that other people have described that clubs won't be cooperative at times, don't, aren't facilitatory. That's why there's such a big noise was made about Nottingham Forest and mitigation, because Nottingham Forest went... 
fine, fair cut, you've got us. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom line as quick as we possibly can. And that's why it was expedited relatively quickly. But it's all about the principle of looking at it properly and saying what is for the betterment of the Premier League alongside what are we trying to achieve via financial fair play. And there will always be this raging argument that financial fair play, the only thing it does is protect those at the top. Well, you know, Manchester City's case, which is one of the arguments that people would suggest is being countermanded by them being charged, is only taking so long because Manchester City have enormous resources. People like Stefan Borson will say, well, it's serious allegations, it should be given a serious amount of time to be considered. Yeah, but I don't think a serious amount of time is three or four years, quite frankly. I yeah. took someone to court for a massive fraud case, and it doesn't take you a year to get them there unless somebody's got enormous resources and wants to take three or four years to get there. Did you win that? Yes, of course. OK. Um, I was asking the Leicester fan how frustrating it is that you don't know the true destiny of your own club. Uh, there's one there, and I, t I totally take it on board. How about asking me, Jim? I'm a Reading fan. I get it. We get it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.